Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wild Your Garden. And today I am in France, along with the many other videos that I am going to be bringing to the channel. If they're not already on there, I will be doing an entire France playlist of some of the amazing flora and fauna that I've seen whilst traveling through this beautiful country. And in this video, I wanted to talk to you about a subject that I hold very close to my own heart. It's something that I feel very kind of nostalgic about, if you like, even though I wasn't around when these habitats were almost everywhere, I believe, many, many years ago. And in fact, it is, of course, the wildflower meadow that I want to discuss with you today because I am here in this one in France where I'm carrying out a consultation where we're planning on doing a lot of replanting work in this massive field uh, which is just a naturally occurring meadow. Now you might think well that's great you're in the south of France of course there's going to be lots of wildlife and wildflowers but actually it's not that different. You could pick this part of land up, stick it in the UK, the soil type is very similar, it's almost like a bit of a silty clay which you can find throughout many parts of the UK and the trees around here in this ancient hedgerow behind me you've got a lot of oak, ash, all the common species you would expect to find in the UK. We've got things like dog grows, hazel, um, lots of cedar trees which obviously aren't native but they are not to the UK anyway but there are loads and loads of similarities and in particular looking over my shoulder that way there's been a nightingale calling from some bramble scrub just at the base of that oak tree so if I was to just start this video and ask you where I was you could say I was in England it does look that way but the life here is just absolutely phenomenal one thing I love about this meadow is there's some mint just naturally occurring all throughout this meadow it looks absolutely gorgeous smells amazing I just don't want to tread anywhere <laughs> walking through it but obviously I'm carrying out this bit of a survey just to find out what's here to see the soil types and to see how we can improve this bit of land because what the clients want to do is introduce more tree species into the area um, but that aside as I say I want to talk to you about the wildflower meadow because we've lost 97 percent of our meadows throughout the UK in the last century which is a staggering statistic one that I really struggle to get my head around and as I said at the beginning of the video it's something that I really feel we ought to do every single thing we can to try and recreate because these habitats I mean the life in this meadow I've barely moved about further than about a radius of about 50 square meters from where I am and I've had I mean in the background about to come past I probably just saw that the clouded yellow we have meadow browns everywhere in force now the small skippers have had six spot bonnet moth there's been a hummingbird hawk moth all on the knapweed uh, there's blues i couldn't even begin to identify yet because i haven't managed to get a photograph of them some of them have a couple of streamers on their um, hind wings so i'm really excited to find out what they are and it's just absolutely full of life. We've had large white, as I say, the skippers. It's just teeming, and the bees as well. It's just humming. And if you listen, there are crickets and grasshoppers everywhere, which I don't know if you guys have noticed, but you don't really hear that many of in the UK. The sedge warbler, starting to call from that scrub again, back near the oak tree over there. But if I stand up now that the wind's died down, uh, sorry about a little bit of wind noise if there is any, by the way, a bit of an impromptu video in the middle of this field, so I <laughs> haven't mic'd up or anything, but you can see, and this isn't unique. This habitat is all throughout France as I've been driving through. It's not everywhere, don't get me wrong. The north of France and right the way through to the south can also be very heavily um, farmed in terms of agriculture, a lot of wheat, rape, other crops as well. And down here, obviously, the southwest renowned for its vineyards, so a lot of vines, a lot of grapes. But there's these pockets everywhere I go where I seem to see these vast swathes of naturally occurring grasses, wildflowers. And I mean, the plants that are in here, just the list is almost endless. There's St. John's wort of some form or another. Uh, there's knapweed all through it. There's ladies' bed straw, hedge bed straw. There's the mint naturally occurring. Bird's foot trefoil, oxeye daisies everywhere. It's just astounding how many wildflowers are naturally occurring here. This wasn't sown. This wasn't 
uh, you know, half the time I have to, oh, there's a cloud of yellow, sparring with a few meadow browns. But these plants have arrived naturally and have been here for thousands of years and just spreading through the countryside. And it's that, I think, that really, really makes it ring home, if you like. It really, oh, there's fritillaries as well, by the way. There's a type of fritillary here that I've not actually identified yet. I've got some footage of, so apologies, I will be putting clips in, obviously. Uh, there's one down there. I've seen my first spotted fritillaries when I was further north in France, but these aren't, they don't quite have the same markings as those butterflies. So, uh, yeah, nice one to see. My guess is probably Niobe or Napweed fritillaries. Anyway, I shall check those out, no doubt, and probably by the time this goes up, have a, a bit of info for you guys. But it's just the habitat that's here is something that we've lost so much of in the UK. And for me, it's certainly very, very refreshing to see so much life, so much natural landscape, because this is, you know, all the only management that goes on here is a local farmer comes, cuts and bales the hay once a year, and that's it. There is no other management required. And it's just thriving. I mean, the crickets here, I'm not kidding you, three three plus inches long <laughs> absolutely gigantic i tried to get one on my hand just to show you the size of it but uh i decided to try and have a bit of my flesh so i, I <laughs> quickly rejected that idea um but there's also the bush crickets as well some fantastic bush crickets which are sort of lime green underneath almost uh, and brown on top but the grasshoppers in general just singing everywhere throughout this meadow and as i say this isn't anything special this isn't on some of the kind of limestone pavements that are a bit further east from here we've got what looked like an emperor dragonfly potentially going through there obviously hunting the insects that are feeding on these flowers so with the bees the butterflies and of course the bats at night that they, they will be providing so much food with the moths that are attracted to these plants for the bats at night and especially with something like that mature tree line along the edge cave habitat for bats to hunt along so really really incredible spot and one that i just wanted to share with you guys and I guess the message for this video is, is, you know, it's twofold really. One, it's identifying just how much of this we've lost throughout the UK, which I know there's already stats out there. You can read about it. You can, you know, Google it 10 times over and you'll get the same numbers, 97, 98% of our wildflower meadows. But obviously in France, I've noticed there's a much bigger proportion of the land that is actually wildflower meadow. And I think it's something we need to take as an example and try and replicate back in the UK because a lot of the species, I mean, we've had the recent report for, from butterfly conservation where, you know, nearly half our butterfly species now are declining, um, which is just all mostly through habitat loss. Um, but when you've got habitats like this that are thriving, it really is an absolute life source for everything, you know, for the birds to feed on the insects as well. And it's just wonderful to see, and it doesn't take very much maintenance at all. So if you are feeling a little bit dismayed by this video, then all is not lost. Obviously there are things you can do in your own garden and not just in the UK, obviously, wherever you're watching this around the world, Try and give some of it back to nature. Try and implement some native wildflowers if you're not familiar with the UK species and obviously you've got differing varieties where you are around the world. Look at what the natives are. Look at what are beneficial for wildlife and get some in your garden. I guarantee nature has an astounding ability to be able to bounce back from you know, the brink effectively to, to be able to repopulate, recolonize new areas. And one of the videos I did recently, I was on some poppy fields uh, just a bit further north from here. Just an incredible sight, you know. So, and these flowers are annuals that cling on through disturbed ground year after year after year. And they've done it for millennia. So if they can do it, then, you know, I'm sure with a little bit of intervention from us and a little bit of help and just by planting some of these in your garden. And it doesn't have to be vast acres like this. I know this is, you know, probably best part of a 10 acre field but it doesn't have to be this big you can have a few square meters and it can make a huge difference to all the above mentioned species not just butterflies and bees and insects but the birds the bats mammals everything else as well so 
yes, I hope this video has given you a bit of an insight as to some of the landscape throughout France, some of the species that are here, and some of the ways in which you can help in your own gardens, because that's the point in all of this. Where we are not the custodians of this landscape, we really can be the custodians of our small postage stamp back gardens, which can have a massive, massive difference, particularly in urban areas. So I really hope that's given you some inspiration to go out there and get planting. And let me know in the comments below what your views are, what your experiences are with the local countryside around you, what the management techniques are, how you feel they should differ. I will be doing this topic uh, some more justice, I think, and covering there's another one of these videos I'm going to create on a different type of habitat here in France that I think has been the cause for decline of a lot of species in the UK, which I'll put in another video. But in this video, as I say, the wildflower meadow, just get some in your garden, you know, make some space for one. Drop some comments below if you've got any questions. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Really, really appreciate the support and uh, stay tuned. Lots more to come from the channel, of course, and I'll be bringing you more ways in which you can help wildlife and videos to come. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.